Hey guys, so um, what is going on? In this video, I'll be doing a somewhat of a comprehensive review on my Kimco Downtown 300i. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I uh, put about a bit over 5,000 miles on the scooter, had it uh, around four, four and a half months. And I thought this would be a good time to kind of give you guys my overall impressions and opinions on the scooter. And also my experience, uh, you know, uh, with the scooter and the um, every, everyday uh, usage of it. So one thing that I absolutely love about the scooter is its design and I think that uh, even though that's kind of a subjective thing I think that speaking generally and objectively uh, most of the people would find this to be a really good looking scooter. On the front here I love what Kimco has done with the design. I love the design of the headlights. So um, we have two sets of headlights. We have the, uh, the low beams and the high beams on the bottom and then around the high beams on the bottom you also have some LEDs which all which are always on kind of a cool look um, here on the top is where the turn signals usually go however in the United States there's some type of regulation so they can't do that even though there's a space there so they actually put them up on the on the side mirrors kind of annoying and I think it would look awesome if they were integrated into the body but that's just not a case and that's one of the reasons why in the US you see a lot of scooters would feature those turn signals that just kind of stick out of the body now again as I've said generally I love the design of this front fascia and this general area here on the front as well we have a 14 inch wheel uh, which is which is nice it's not the biggest um, and uh, but it does a pretty good job of making the bike handle uh, pretty well and obviously we have a telescopic fork as well can't really remember what the sign of the brake uh, brake rotor on the front is but brakes generally work really well and the bike stops uh, pretty good even though it doesn't have any of the safety features like ABS or any type of traction control but generally as far as the design is concerned I do love the front uh, design of the scooter as far as the side design of the scooter is concerned I actually think that the bike looks even better from the side love what Kimco has done here um, again I think they did a fantastic job making the bike look uh, uh, really sporty but also somewhat conservative it doesn't feature any crazy edges or whatnot so I think that this general styling would uh, appeal to you know pretty much anybody in their 20s like myself or anybody you know who's maybe even older than that and would like something sporty but not too uh, not super aggressive uh, here on the right hand side is also where the exhaust sits and then we can see that rear wheel as well the rear wheel is a bit wider than the front um, not sure if you can run the same size wheels um, not sure how much space there is in the back but it is a bit wider and it's also a 13 inch so an inch smaller but the bike actually handles pretty well and it's stable even at higher speeds so um, going around the back here we have this huge bag behind. I do uh, I do like what Kimco has done here. One feature that I absolutely love is the fact that they integrated the turn signals into the body. So they're actually here and uh, they look really nice actually. Uh, I, I love that they were able to do this and uh, I think it would just kind of look awkward if he had you know, those turn signals just kind of sticking out. So I do love what Kimco has done uh, here with uh, uh, as far as that's concerned. Now on the left hand side, 
here is where you're going to find your uh, air filter as well your CVT cover so pretty much any maintenance that you have to do everything is really accessible and really easy but generally speaking as far as the design is concerned I do like it and uh, again I think that Kimco did a really good job as far as the exterior design is concerned now as we get closer to the scooter we can see the seat and it's quite of a big seat um, here especially where the passenger sit there's this huge area I'm not a huge fan of that I think that they should have given the rider a bit more area and then cut this cut this a bit uh, just so the rider has a bit more uh, adjustability but that's not what they did there not a huge deal but it can be kind of annoying at times now um, I'll pop that set open for you guys so you guys can see how much space we have underneath uh, the seat features this little prop they'll you know open up the seat for you um, I, I do like the fact that they are doing this but as you guys can see the prop uh, doesn't extend fully so it's kind of hard to get into this area down there one thing that you can do is you can buy an extension for the prop or you can actually remove it all together it just takes four screws or four nuts and then you can uh, pretty much open up the seat fully uh, pretty decent uh, storage space here in the where the uh, passenger would sit where the rider would sit there is decent storage space there as well however this little hump eats into that space so you can put a like a half size helmet in there but that's pretty much it overall i think the uh, this general area where the storage is is pretty well designed behind uh, besides that little hump that just kind of eats into the 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 space there but overall nothing really to complain about um so let me actually take a seat on the scooter uh, one thing that I think a lot of people would like is that this seat is really low So I'm actually sitting down now and my feet are flat on the ground. This isn't the case with a lot of scooters and I think uh, the way Kimco was able to achieve this is by having this seat uh, be really low. I'll get off so you guys can see the difference between uh, the rider seat here and the passenger seat is is a good five maybe six inches or so and that's why uh, when you sit down on the scooter you can actually you can sit really comfortably at a stop because it doesn't matter how tall you are even if you're you know five six or five five i feel like your feet will be flat on the ground and that's kind of nice for some people especially if they're new into riding for myself uh, i don't really i don't really mind it however when i'm riding the scooter when i put my knee, uh, my knees up as you guys can see they're almost they're only a few inches away from the handlebars so if you're taller that kind of may be an annoyance and also the lack and the um, adjustability of the seat makes the scooter um, feel a bit cramped especially if you're uh, over six feet tall so that's one of the downsides I feel like if the seat was a bit uh, 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 a bit higher and then the backrest wasn't as pronounced then you could move a bit more and then you can kind of move back and I think that would be generally more comfortable another thing that I do not like I love the uh, I love the foot rest area here on the bottom however this top section here is pretty much useless if you're taller you can't really have your foot on the top and on the bottom as well just because it's there's a lot of uh, a lot of space there so that's you can't really do that whatsoever and then if you have your feet up up like this there they come really close to the handlebars so it's not extremely comfortable so pretty much this area here is somewhat useless if you're a taller rider again one of the one of the annoyances when it comes to the ergonomics this general area here as much as i love the design of the outside of the scooter i think that kimco could have done a much better job designing this general cockpit area here as you guys can see there's pretty much nothing going on here it's pretty bland and pretty boring to be quite honest other than this shiny piece of plastic here kimco uh, hasn't done anything to kind of give make this area a bit more lively one annoying thing that they uh, uh, have done is uh, uh, they decided not to even include a logo or like a kimco badge on the on the handlebar cover which is really strange and kind of annoying and again just makes this general area a bit boring 
everything is black there's nothing going on and uh, again not uh, not a huge deal and this was the case when the scooter came out back in 2010 with a lot of the scooters in this class but I think that you know with the outside design being so stunning they could have made this general area feel a bit more lively um, for some of you guys that you know follow scooters you may know that the Kawasaki's J300 scooter which is sold mainly I believe in like UK um, is based on the Kimco downtown shares pretty much everything with the Kimco but uh, Kawasaki decided to change some of this area here and just makes it uh, look a bit more lively and uh, I do like that and I think Kimco should have done that because this is where the rider will you know spend most of their time they'll be looking at the general area here so they could have done something to kind of improve the looks and whatnot they didn't it's not a big deal but uh, again it's kind of boring especially compared to some of the bikes that are for sale now um, as far as the um the cluster board is concerned so you have your speedometer on the left you have this little digital screen in the middle and your tachometer on the right with the three buttons that are used to control pretty much that's uh, uh and everything uh, in this general area here and then as far as the handlebars are concerned pretty standard layout horn turn signals and lights on the left and then your kill switch and your uh hazardous lights and the push start button are on the right one nice thing that Kimco does is they include this little uh, a trigger at the back of the uh, left uh, uh, left hander bar which uh, triggers the uh, passing light so that's kind of cool the brakes they, they feel nice they feel good and generally everything feels really good and high quality it's just that this general area is kind of boring uh, the brakes they feel good you can also adjust them they're four-way adjustable in regards to how you'd like them to feel which is kind of nice and uh, obviously we have these uh, side mirrors here in some markets you can actually get them uh, attached here to the frame of the scooter which i think that would be a better position but the reason why kimco includes uh, the um the mirrors here is again because they have to implement those turn signals into them so that's just what this they decided to do um, not a big deal don't mind the placement but i think they would look much better if they were up front uh, we also have here on the front this little hook i guess you can hook up maybe a bag or something here and then the um, gas tank is located underneath this cover kind of a strange way to open this you have this little thing that just kind of looks out of place um, I don't know why Kimco does this but I guess you push uh, push down on it you open it up and that's where the gas is you need obviously your key to open that up um, and the uh, left hand side here there's also a little cubby space area uh, you can open that up there's plenty of space there and it also features one of those cigarette lighters so you can put in like a, a charger in there so you can charge your phone uh, that's a nice touch uh, other than that it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward nothing too exciting about this general area here so let me just turn on the scooter and then I'll walk you guys through some of the stuff that uh, actually comes up on the display so uh, you have your temperature gauge and then you have your fuel level on the uh, on the right on the bottom you'll have your odometer and then uh, your time to switch between these different settings you just hold the adjust button and you kind of have to hold it it'll give you trip a another hold will give you trip B the last hold will give you your service indicator which is I have another uh, 2,000 miles and then again your odometer so nothing really special pretty basic stuff but I guess everything that you would uh, need um, I think that's pretty much it so um, let me actually start the scooter and then uh, I'll talk to you guys about some of the um, some other characteristics when it comes to daily use so obviously to start it up uh, uh, hand on the brake you push the the power on button and then you're ready to go so um i don't know if you guys seen my other video on the kimco but i bought the kimco um about four and a half months ago from a lady who she bought it brand new and this is a um this is a 2013 year model but it was bought brand new in 2000 and six 16 or 17 um so she bought it brand new put like 50 miles on it and decided to sell it she just didn't like it and I ended up getting it for a really good price 
and that's actually why I got it because it was a really great value and a lot of the Kimcos are which is one of the big pluses a lot of Yamahas and Hondas will keep their value at Kimco just because it's not a really well-known brand in the United States at least it doesn't keep its value as good as uh, some of those bigger brands do so getting one for like I don't know like $1,800 or under $2,000 is pretty easy actually and that's what I actually got mine uh, for. So I thought for a 300cc scooter that will be reliable a sec, why not? I don't, I don't really care that nobody knows what Kimco is. <coughs> Sorry guys, I don't really care that nobody knows what Kimco is because I'm getting a scooter to use it every day. And that's where the Kimco, I feel like, excels. Even though, as I've said, the seating position is not ideal, around the town it's totally fine. Um, it's it's comfortable, you know, for journeys uh, uh, up to an hour or so, and uh, you get really good gas mileage. I get about 70, 75 miles per gallon, and it's plenty fast and powerful. Um, another, so besides the design, uh, the exterior design, which I said was an absolute win and one of its best features, the engine is also an absolute win and one of the, the best features that the scooter has to offer. And the reason why I say that is because it's, it's really powerful and I feel like it's going to be reliable as SAG. Now, the 300cc engine in the Kimco produces roughly about 30 or so horsepower and that's uh, plenty fast to get you to about 90 miles per hour. So you can pretty much take this thing on the, on the highway and you can use it to commute every single day. Now, uh, as I said, the whole seating position on the seat are a bit uncomfortable on longer journeys but if those journeys are about you know hour and a half or two hours then you'll be just fine you'll be getting a uh, great gas mileage good performance and uh, you'll also look good you know while doing those things so uh the engine on the scooter is absolutely a win in my book um, something that's not so great um, that i have to mention is the cvt transmission Generally, I feel like the CVT transmission will be extremely reliable and uh, I've actually changed the belt on mine um, just because the, the original belt was kind of old. It was like six years old. But, um, but when compared to, for example, a Yamaha X-Max, which I also have, you can see that the CVT is not as refined. It's not as refined and there's also a slightest of uh, clutch slip that, um, that I can tell. And this isn't specific to my scooter. This is uh, pretty much universal across all the downtown line. Uh, and the reason why I know that is because I've talked with a lot of people who own uh, Kimco downtowns and they pretty much tell me the same thing. Another downside is that the CVT also can be kind of loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it now and I can't be just because of the wind noise but um, it gets a bit loud and it just doesn't seem as refined as something you would get like an a Yamaha. Again, I have no doubt in my mind that it's uh, that it'll be reliable uh, as heck but it's just not as refined as uh, again as maybe like a CVT uh, of a Yamaha or a uh, uh, of a Honda. So um, just another thing that kind of uh, wanted to point out. Um, as far as uh, use in the rain, you use uh, using the scooter every day and whatnot. It, it, it does really good actually. I use it every day. Uh, I, I have ridden it in the rain. There is zero issues whatsoever. The, um, the front uh, fairings are really wide. So the bike offers really good wind protection. Now, as far as the windscreen is concerned, in my case, I feel like the wind is literally hitting the top of my helmet, which can be kind of annoying. If you were, if you were a bit shorter, I'm about six feet tall, I think you wouldn't have that issue. If you were taller, it would be hitting, hitting you directly in the face. So that's kind of annoying, but that can be fixed with, uh, I guess, an aftermarket uh, windscreen. <laughs> Not a big deal, but something that I wanted to mention. But generally, the, the body panels being so wide, they provide a lot of... Uh, a lot of wind protection uh, so <laughs> that's really good same goes for the rain protection again this area generally is really big so if you're going about 40 40 to 50 miles per hour and it's raining um, your the front of your body will not get wet whatsoever again just because there's so much body in in front of you um, as far as uh, side width is concerned Kimco does kind of suffer 
a bit more than other bikes and I don't know if uh, the reason is because it's so long and kind of uh, kind of big but when you're on the highway you'll see you'll feel those um, those side winds and if you're a, an inexperienced rider that can be kind of scary but generally there's really nothing to worry about um, I'm not sure if there is actually anything else that I that I wanted to point out I guess a couple of things that are also really good is the fact that as I've said maintenance on the bike is really easy uh, doing your gear oil changing your um, engine oil doing your coolant um, uh, changing your belt you can pretty much do all of that at home with just a couple of simple tools to change the oil and for example the air filter the CVT filter uh, you, basically all you need is a, a wrench and like a 8 millimeter a 10 and a 12 millimeter socket that's pretty much it and you can do that in a matter of like 20 minutes changing the uh, CVT belt now that's a bit uh, uh, more invasive and whatnot and you probably need like an impact driver or some type of a tool but but again nothing that you can't really do at home um, so that's that's a really good plus uh, a minus in that compartment is that this is a Kimco and finding parts uh, it's not difficult if you go through a dealer, but it's gonna be expensive. So uh, just to kind of put things in perspective, getting an air filter for a Kimco through a dealer is about $30. That air filter, if you buy it from a uh, like a shop in Taiwan, it's like $8, the same air filter. So their, their markup is ridiculously big. And that's because they can do that because again, you can't, you can't go out to Walmart and you can't buy this air filter. It's really specific to the Kimco, which is kind of annoying. Annoying. The good thing is, as I've said, you can get in touch with people from Taiwan and they'll send you stuff over and you're going to be paying a really good price on parts. And that's actually what I did. I have a ton of ton of spare parts for the Kimco and I got them all from Taiwan, from the actual like shop that sells Kimco products in Taiwan. That like literally a couple of miles away from the factory and it's really reasonably priced the thing is you're going to be waiting about a month to month and a half to get those parts to arrive so uh at, something i suggest is that you do you get the things or you get parts uh in advance so you don't have to kind of worry about it that but getting parts in the united states generally is kind of expensive especially for a kimco product and again to put things in, in perspective getting parts from a yamaha x max is about <laughs> Uh, two times less expensive than it is for a Kimco going through a dealer which is kind of crazy and then for the Yamaha I can go on websites like Revzilla, Parzilla, Boats.com or any of those websites and they'll have the parts for the Kimco they're not going to carry those parts just because it's not an uh, established brand in the United States in other parts of the world it probably is and I know that it is in uh, a lot of European markets and Asian markets in the United States that's just not the case but also scooters aren't big in the United States anyways um, performance I have to say that performance is uh, definitely a plus on the scooter as I've said you can get to about 90 miles per hour which is plenty fast so you can get on the highway you can cruise comfortably at 75 and that's what I do when I'm on the highway I'm going about 75 the bike isn't revving too hard I'm not stressing the engine so whatsoever actually and the bike feels really good uh, the downside to that is is that after about 70 miles per hour there isn't really a lot of power there there's a lot of power for example right now I'm doing 35 if I push it the bike accelerates pretty well and even uh, lower in the rev range is where it shines like when you're going about 25 and you want to overtake somebody even now it, it does really well but on the when you're on the highway it just doesn't have that power and that's kind of weird the way they tune the engine because i feel like my yamaha which has less power than the kimco does better when it's on the highway it has a bit more power uh, higher up in the rev range kimco seems to carry a lot of the power really low in the rev range like right now as soon as i hit the throttle the bike just kind of wants to wants to lodge forward um so something i guess uh, something else to keep in mind um other than that there really isn't a lot to say about the kimco it's a it's a good 
good overall scooter. Um, the biggest plus, absolutely, as I've said, is the fact that they're relatively inexp inexpensive to buy and relatively inexpensive to maintain. Uh, and being pretty much uh, bulletproof is what I feel like. You know, Kimco has been in the game for a long time. They were making products for Honda. Um, they work with Kawasaki, BMW right now. So they make good quality stuff. And um, I feel like this engine on the downtown, it's uh, it's pretty much bulletproof. It's a four valve engine. It's pretty uh, uh, pretty responsive, pretty fast. It's pretty uh, efficient and it's also bulletproof. And I feel like if you maintain it properly, you can get, you know, tens of thousands of miles out of this engine. You can probably ride it, you know, forever if you, if you uh, take good care of it. So that's uh, that's an absolute uh, an absolute plus. And as far as prices are concerned, as I've said, you can find these uh, anywhere, you know, from I don't know, eighteen hundred to about twenty-two hundred dollars. And uh, I think that's a good price considering that you know people start their little fifties for this that that amount of money. And you can't really compare a three hundred cc maxi scooter to a little fifty cc scooter. Fifty cc scooters, they're fun, they're nice around town, but that's pretty much all they can do on, on the Kimco you can pretty much do all of that plus you can take it to you know haul ass and you know put miles on it and whatnot I've taken this downtown um, on a journey of over 1,000 miles it was uh, uh, of uh, it was a four-day journey and I was <clears throat> the longest I did in one day was around 400 miles and uh, the bike the bike does that without any issues so it'll you know it'll go 70 all day long it, it has no issues whatsoever and then when you're going 70 or when the bike is capable of going you know those higher speeds that you don't have to worry about you know going taking this road taking that road you can just pretty much take any road and you can enjoy it because the bike is capable of being on pretty much any road that uh, that will be available to you which is uh, again that's a big benefit so um, if you are in the market for uh, of getting a scooter to kind of use it as a daily uh, rider and you want something that's relatively inexpensive but uh, reliable i feel like the kimco is your best best option if you're in the united states uh, one unique thing about uh, united states especially the midwestern area where i'm from uh, or where i live is that uh, people buy buy scooters and they just never use them to be honest they usually use them or they usually buy them to take him uh, uh, take him to like camping grounds and they'll put like 150 miles on them and you know they'll never use them for like two years and they'll just they're just taking up space so they're they're gonna sell them and then when they sell them they're losing a lot of money but they have to do that because nobody else will buy them for you know anything close to what they paid for so if you're a buyer on the second uh, second hand market you can get a really good deal on uh on used scooters which is really awesome again it's really awesome for people who use scooters to uh, to daily commute and that's that might be specific to the midwestern part of the united states and again it's a benefit uh, if you are in that area because again as i've said you can buy one of these guys relatively inexpensively and you can ride it uh you can use it and uh pretty much not lose any money when it when it's time to sell it if you want to sell it so as i've said i put 5,000 miles on this scooter and i know for a fact that i can sell it for the same amount of money that i got it uh, i did get a pretty good deal uh, the lady um, the lady actually uh, bought the scooter uh, as I've said brand new she had like all of the paperwork and she was in about five thousand dollars I said over five thousand dollars she sold the bike for less than two thousand dollars so she lost she lost uh, three thousand dollars in uh, in a couple of years and only put 50 50 like eight miles on it which is truly ridiculous but <clears throat> the reason why she ended up selling it for so low was because nobody was interested nobody wanted to buy a kimco scooter here people that buy scooters uh, in the in these parts of the united states they'll usually go for like a 50 cc or like a 150 something small and they want name brands not that kimco isn't a name brand it is but it's not in in, in the united states unfortunately 
even though they make fantastic products but again that's a that's an advantage for people who are on the secondhand market trying to snatch one of these guys up and uh, that's why I got lucky and that's why I do recommend it because again you can you can put oil in it and gas and that's pretty much it you know finding finding a belt isn't isn't too difficult you can do that like off of eBay and then the beam that's that's pretty much it and I feel like it'll be reliable as heck and another reason why I'm talking about the reliability is because <clears throat> Kimco sells their products throughout the world and then if you go for example look up uh, Kimco's for sale in Asia or in Europe you can find them with like 50,000 miles and people will be asking pretty much the same amount of money that you can uh, that you're gonna be paying for one that has 50 miles in the United States which is truly ridiculous <laughs> and I get that because we have two different markets but again it's a big advantage to the Kimco so generally I, I think that this is a really good scooter um, a lot of ups sides and uh, if you're fine with the fact that this general cockpit area is kind of bland um, I think that uh, this would be a uh, absolutely no-brainer it's one of the best buys on the used market and I, 